Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to the Sunday Recap, my weekly vlog where I talk a bit about my last week in games. Let's start with EVE Online. I actually haven't played that much EVE Online in the last week or so. It's been decently busy at my work and, uh, well, the Gnostic Blackout. I'm like trying to figure out what I want to do there and I'm still not sure, of course, if I want to go like the PvP pirate hunting route. Well, I'm in a bad spot for that because right next to me is Providence and I actually want to respect the Not Red Don't Shoot philosophy that exists there so we'll see in the upcoming days and weeks what i actually want to do with the gnostic blackout but for now last week has still been in high sick where i did a bit of exploration not that much of it but the drops have been around average so i was actually decently uh, pleased with what i managed to do there of course i kept up with the pi as well some of my planets are starting to get nice and full of uh, finished pi products so we'll have to make a trip back to Jita at some point but i also know noticed from uh, Eve talk that uh, stuff that I'm producing is actually under pressure a little bit so I need to find the right timing for that as well we've been keeping up with the blueprint uh, blueprint copy business uh, as well that's going very nicely I would say and I actually also bought a couple of small blueprints as well to uh, bring uh, into a full uh, deployment I think I want to try some industry stuff as well maybe try to sell in zero zero that could be an option there as well uh, we'll see how all of that evolves. Uh, in general I think that the feedback for the Gnostic Blackout seems to be pretty positive. Lots of people are finding at least some more fights than they did before. I'm not sure what it's like to rat uh, or to mine in such an environment. Of course that could be a lot more risky but I also get the impression from what I read from the big coalitions that they have ways to basically secure systems uh, with standing fleets and with things like that that uh, I mean they should still be able to uh, run their PvE empires at this point in Nelsic as well. Haven't heard anything about the drifters by the way so I'm not sure if those guys are still uh, uh, flying around harassing the Nelsic structures, Nelsic raters and things like that as well but if that gets toned down or, or as I've said I think that 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 does need to have like a reward path or something like that uh, when it comes to those uh, drifter incursions in zero zero i think it's looking pretty good lots of people i think are having fun with the nasik blackout at this point perhaps i'll try to join them uh, next week or something like that Next up, I also played a couple of Dota Underlord games. I'm still learning the ropes and that meta is now changing because of changes to the game itself. So for instance, the Warlock power has changed uh, substantially. It's still very powerful from my experience, uh, but it's now dependent on actually a cost from the Warlocks, which does bring it back quite a little bit from uh, what it was previously. Basically, if you had two Warlocks, four Warlocks or six Warlocks, you had better and better uh, passive uh, uh, life leech uh, on all the heroes on the board that was just stupidly powerful and this has changed to something that's a bit more uh, situational or you need to be lucky that they actually get to cast their uh, spells there what seems to be still very very strong potentially are the the uh, the four trolls that uh, can increase uh, the uh, the uh, damage uh, speed the the dps uh, basically uh, the attack speed I should say uh, from uh, not just themselves mostly themselves just as the innate power but there's also quite often an item that can drop that they actually also give a speed buff to their neighbors and that becomes really powerful uh, potentially now, I've been enjoying that game myself I'm still exploring it a little bit whenever I find a little bit of time to do so and uh, yeah I think from time to time one quick game of Dota Underlords maybe also a bot game to explore a certain meta is still possible so while this is still in development and definitely subject to change, I must say that it is a pretty fun game to play. The big drawback, a single game does last 40-50 minutes easily and that is a very long time to commit of course for something that is not as, uh, I would say, permanent as what we experience for instance in EVE Online or even in another MMO or something like that. So it's a big choice to make there. Uh, I personally also prefer stuff that has shorter rounds. Um, think uh, overwatch things like that can be a couple of games in that time span you can also go in one game 15 20 minutes something like that uh, is, is more up my alley but it's relaxed enough uh, that i actually feel like dota underlords uh, has its place and, and and i'm definitely having fun playing that game 
And this brings me to the final game for this week, but it is the game that I have played the most of. I've really been exploring Foundation. So this is an early access game on Steam that I grabbed during the summer sale. It had pretty good reviews overall, and I was looking for something that uh, would be in line with the Banished experience. I think I've found it in certain ways, although there's definitely some differences and some, well, negative uh, aspects to Foundation as well, in my opinion. So one thing again to keep in mind, just like we do the underlords this game is in development definitely still subject to change and this is early access as well you are getting some of that weird code text that they're adding some placeholder stuff here and there uh, is definitely a part of the experience but so far uh, i've been able to play that i think for like 10 hours or something like that a couple of of towns two towns that i've basically built up to a certain point so i'm getting very close to unlocking everything in my second one and it's a lot of fun if you like banished if you like that type of relaxed gameplay then you can definitely take a look at foundation uh, the drawbacks i should probably mention them indeed is that it's very much on rails uh, because you need to do lots of unlocking steps where for instance you need to build a certain um, uh, certain buildings you know to unlock an extra tier then you need to get to a certain amount of uh, citizens in order to unlock another tier you need to earn a certain of a, a currency in order to unlock other stuff so there's lots of unlocking phases there and while that does keep you trying to figure out well, all right we gotta build this we gotta build that it also puts you on rails uh, every single game is gonna start the exact same thing and in order to get to the fully unlocked items you're gonna have to go through all the same steps and as a result i think that they will start to be and feel very similar uh, there's there's very little room to deviate from the path i have found uh, especially early on um, you have to then start to work on your economy but you don't have extra workers for anything so you're on rails uh, you've got to go through a certain steps in order to grow to a certain size and that's only then that you can start to decide well all right i want to do a bit more of this a bit more of that uh, but um, yeah it's it's it feels like it's much more on rails than with banished where you get plenty of options far more quickly and then you just need to trade for all the different uh, crops and things like that so here yeah it's it's got many more layers of unlocking that you need to do and that unfortunately creates a bit more of a of, of a straightforward experience that you have to go through certain steps on the other hand it's not tied to a grid so that does feel very uh, cool and also you just you paint areas for them to build housing for instance and then the citizens do that themselves so it's very organic it's a little bit chaotic as well it does it's not so strict but that does make it uh, quite a lot of fun so you can decide all right in this area we're going to regrow trees and we're going to chop them down it's going to become wood production here it's a good place for a mine let's build a small economy around that and then just try to weave your housing in between all of that you need to build churches you need to build uh, the, the, uh, everything so that they can have clothes sheep farms things like that it's the classical build-up of course uh, but uh, you can basically really put anything anywhere and uh, it feels and looks very organic uh, as you build up a town in foundation so yeah i've spent a, a decent amount of uh, time in foundation i'm not sure how much more i want to spend in there basically i'm very close to unlocking everything in the second town that i've made there and uh, yeah, as i've said the sandboxy feeling there it's lacking a little bit because of how much you're on rails uh, especially for the first four to five hours even uh, in the game and that's a bit of a disappointment uh, that's a bit of a disadvantage of foundation compared to banish where you could really plan something out completely and then just go for it see if it works if it if it doesn't work uh, here there's just no way to deviate uh, from the early steps that that you need to do unfortunately but yeah uh, there's room for mods there there's still room for improvements and there's like castles that you can build you can start to train armies all of that stuff i haven't done yet but that could potentially mean that uh, the game can develop into something way bigger than it is now it is early access after all but so far i've actually enjoyed my experience in foundation very much and i was my last week in games guys thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all next time